We've opened Pandora's box with the development of nuclear weapons and artificial intelligence shares a similar daunting potential. Our team has much to discuss, as evidenced in my previous update from Omaha, where I covered the Berkshire Hathaway annual shareholder meeting. One of the major stories was Berkshire's significant reduction in Apple shares, but that was just one facet of the event. The meeting also dealt into topics ranging from Warren Buffett's perspectives on AI and the U.S. debt crisis to a memorable tribute to the late Charlie Munger, complete with an awkward moment involving Buffett himself. In this update, we're focusing on the broader implications and insights from the meeting beyond just the Apple news. For those who missed it, a significant discussion point was Buffett's comparison of AI's evolution to that of nuclear arms during World War II. Despite his limited personal knowledge of AI, Buffett recognizes its profound implications. He recounted a disturbing personal encounter with deepfake technology where an indistinguishable replica of himself made unauthorized statements highlighting the potential dangers of AI in manipulation and fraud. Such capabilities pose serious risks for deceit and exploitation, signaling AI as a potent tool in the hands of those inclined towards such misuse. This aligns with concerns raised by other influential figures like Elon Musk, who advocates for swift regulatory action to manage AI's advancing capabilities. Buffett's encounter underscores the urgent need for oversight in a technology that's rapidly outpacing our ability to control it, potentially making scams a booming industry if left unchecked. AI indeed carries a dual nature. Its potential for benefit is as immense as its potential for harm. This dichotomy becomes even more pronounced as we witness its capabilities firsthand in our office replicating voices so precisely that distinguishing between the real and the artificial becomes challenging. This includes voices of notable figures such as Jamie Dimon and others enhancing our podcast but also demonstrating AI's unsettling power. Further discussing the cautious approach of Berkshire Hathaway towards AI, it becomes clear that Warren Buffett, despite recognizing the technology's significance, prefers to steer clear of investing in areas outside his expertise. This was evident during his reflections on international investments, particularly in China. Buffett underscored his investment philosophy of staying within a circle of competence, primarily focusing on the American market. His familiarity with U.S. regulations, economic strengths, and weaknesses guides his investment decisions, making him hesitant about committing to markets that are culturally and structurally different. Buffett elaborated on this during the meeting, explaining that while Berkshire Hathaway does engage with the global economy through its varied holdings, major investments are likely to remain U.S.-centric. He attributes this to a better understanding of potential risks and opportunities in the U.S. compared to other countries. However, he mentioned an exception with his comfortable stance towards diversified investments in Japanese trading houses, indicating a selective confidence in certain international markets. This conservative approach also stems from the need to focus on significant investments that impact Berkshire scale. Due to the conglomerate's massive size, only substantial acquisitions or investments in major U.S. companies are considered as smaller deals would barely influence Berkshire's financial needle. As we shift focus from Buffett's investment strategies to broader economic concerns, it's crucial to address the ongoing discussions about the U.S. debt crisis, inflation, and interest rates, topics Buffett paid considerable attention to during this year's meeting. Shifting our focus to broader economic concerns, the central issue discussed at the meeting was the sizable U.S. deficit and the growing national debt. Concerns were raised about the potential for the U.S. dollar to lose its status as the world's reserve currency if the trajectory of debt accumulation doesn't change. In response to a question about the global market's capacity to absorb U.S. debt, Buffett expressed his view that U.S. debt should remain viable for a very long time, attributing this to a lack of viable alternatives. Buffett highlighted that the scale of national debt wasn't always as immense, suggesting that the real threat isn't the amount of debt, but rather the potential for unchecked inflation that could destabilize the global economy. 
He reassured that despite discussions and concerns from figures like Ray Dalio and the observed shifts by major U.S. Treasury holders like Japan and China, the dollar's position as the reserve currency remained solid due to the absence of a comparable alternative. However, Buffett was critical of the media's fixation on the Federal Reserve's actions, arguing that the real issue at hand is the fiscal deficit. He praised Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell for his integrity and acumen, but pointed out that Powell doesn't have control over fiscal policies. Buffett expressed frustration that the media and public discourse focused too heavily on the Fed rather than on the pressing issue of fiscal irresponsibility. He underscored the alarming trend in U.S. fiscal health, noting that a significant portion of government outlays is now dedicated to servicing debt with interest payments consuming a larger share of the budget. This is exacerbated by recent interest rate hikes, which, although necessary, have made debt servicing more costly and highlighted the underlying issue of fiscal mismanagement. Buffett's primary message was clear. The focus should shift from the Federal Reserve to addressing the fiscal deficit. He stressed the importance of moving towards a budget surplus to mitigate the national debt burden that's increasingly becoming unsustainable. His insights reflect deep concerns about the long-term economic stability of the U.S. and the need for disciplined fiscal policy to safeguard the nation's financial future. Warren Buffett also shared his insights regarding Berkshire Hathaway's significant cash reserves, which have recently swelled to $182 billion. Despite having such a substantial amount of cash, Buffett explained that they haven't found compelling investment opportunities that meet their criteria for significant returns. He conveyed a sense of prudence and patience, stating that at times in his career, he's been flush with opportunities, while at other times, like the present, nothing particularly attractive appears on the horizon. Buffett's conservative stance on holding cash seems well considered given the current stock market valuations. He revealed a level of comfort with the current situation, citing that the cash is still yielding a 5.1% return through short-term treasury bonds, a stark contrast to the near-zero returns from 2020. This return on cash reserves, though modest, is deemed preferable in a market where other investments don't currently meet Berkshire standards for value and potential return. Finally, Buffett touched on the life advice, echoing Charlie Munger's philosophy of envisioning the legacy one wishes to leave behind. He encouraged the audience to choose educational and social paths aligned with their ultimate obituaries, emphasizing the importance of starting immediately and preserving through inevitable challenges. The meeting also served as a point in tribute to Charlie Munger, Buffett's longtime partner and vice chairman who had recently passed away. The session began with a tribute video celebrating Munger's life and wit, setting an emotional tone for the event. Buffett, clearly affected by his friend's absence, inadvertently highlighted Munger's absence in a touching yet heart-rending moment during his speech. The gathering closed on a note of reassurance about Berkshire Hathaway's future leadership. Greg Abel, designated as Buffett's successor, was praised for his competent handling of the meeting, assuring stakeholders of the firm's stability and leadership continuity post-Buffett. Overall, the 2024 Berkshire Hathaway shareholder meeting not only addressed critical financial and economic issues, but also reflected on the personal and philosophical principles guiding Buffett's decisions, leaving attendees both informed and introspective about the broader impacts of their investment choices. Thank you for joining us on this in-depth look at the 2024 Berkshire Hathaway shareholder meeting. If you found this video insightful and you'd like to see more content just like this, please give us a thumbs up. It really helps support the channel. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our future updates from now on. If you really appreciate our coverage today, consider showing your support through the Super Thanks feature. It helps us keep bringing you detailed analyses and exclusive content. Your support makes all the difference. Thank you again for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.